In this lesson, we'll be finding the area of a rectangle and a parallelogram. Make sure that you write on the top of your notebook, finding the area of a rectangle and a parallelogram. You want to have a piece of paper and a pencil ready. Now, in the past, you've been finding the area of rectangles and parallelograms by simply just counting the squares. Now, we're going to start using a formula, and our formula is down here, area equals base times height. So to find the area of this rectangle, we're going to multiply the base times the height. So we're going to go ahead and find the base. So we're going to count the squares on the bottom here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is our base. And then we'll count our height. One, two, three, four is our height. So base times height, 7 times 4, the area of this rectangle would be 28, and we'll pretend this is centimeters squared. Now we put squared for finding area because this is a two-dimensional shape. Okay, when we're finding area, it's important that we use the correct labels. So you'll notice here that we've got yards and centimeters. So when we're labeling area, we want to use the correct um, correct labels. We don't want to label something miles if it's only in centimeters. So for this first rectangle here on the left, we're going to find the area. So we have a base of 7, a height of 4. 7 times 4 is 28. And then our label would be yards squared. And then for our second rectangle here, we've got a base of 8 a height of 5, so 8 times 5 is 40. We have 40 centimeters squared. Notice how we labeled in yards with this one and centimeters with this one. Okay, for these practice problems, we are going to again find the area of these rectangles. So the first one, we need to do base times height. So we're going to look for the base. And the base of a rectangle and the height of a rectangle are, are pretty easy. They're a lot easier than parallelograms because you've got two pairs of parallel sides. So our base could also be on the top. That's fine. So we've got 9 because that also means we have 9 down here. And the 4 over here for our height also means we have 4 over here. So we're going to do base times height. 9 times 4 is 36 inches squared would be the area of that rectangle. Now let's find the area of this rectangle. 14 times 7. I'm going to do 14 times 7. So I'm going to do a little, actually a little lattice box right here in the rectangle. It's 14, 7. 4 times 7 is 28. 7 times 1 is 7. So we have 98 centimeters squared is the area of that rectangle. For the final problem here, it's presented in a word problem, and you'll see this a lot. It says a rectangle has a base of 5 meters and a height of 12 meters. What is the area? So again, base times height, so 5 times 12. Set up our lattice box again. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times, oops, 5 times 2 is 10. Add them up. So we get 60, 60 meters. And again, it's squared because we're doing with, dealing with a two-dimensional shape. So again, area of a rectangle is simply base times height. Now here is homework question number one. Make sure you are showing your work in your math notebook once again. Homework question number one. And then you will submit your answers on the Google form that matches this homework video. So it's area of a rectangle and a parallelogram. You are building a rectangular garden that has a base of 4 feet and a height of 8 feet. What is the area of your garden? So you'll need to do base times height to figure out the area of that garden. Now for the area of parallelograms, we use the exact same formula. Area equals base times height. And here's why. Because a parallelogram is essentially a rectangle. Watch this. If I take this side of the parallelogram and just drag it over 
It fits just like a nice puzzle piece. And now all of a sudden, we have a rectangle. So this formula for the area of a parallelogram is the exact same as the formula for an area of a rectangle. Now we need to classify what is base and what is height. And so with parallelograms, it's a little bit trickier. It's important to remember that the base is the side that the parallelogram can stand on without leaning. So if you look at these examples here, parallelogram would not, could not stand on this side here, for example, without leaning. It'd be at a, a diagonal. So the base of a parallelogram is one of the flat sides. It's not, as a, it's not at an angle. So you can see we label base with B. So here we've got a base. And then you could also use this top side as a base because these are parallel lines, which means they are going to be equal. There's a couple other examples of base and height. The height is going to go up the middle of the parallelogram between each one of the bases, and the height always makes a 90 degree angle. As you can see right here, we've got a 90 degree angle, which makes our height and measures our height. It's important for you to remember that because you're going to need to be able to distinguish between uh, lots of different numbers and, try, and people are going to try and trick you about what the base or the height is when you're looking at parallelograms. Okay, homework question number two. You need to decide which one of these dotted lines represents the height of this parallelogram. Is it dotted line A, B, C, D, or E? Remember, the height must be at a 90 degree angle to the base. Okay, now we're going to find the area of these two parallelograms. So we've got the parallelogram on the left. We need to figure out what is the base and what is the height. So the base is going to be 15 centimeters, and that's because it's the only, only number that we're given here that um, we could, if we were to set the parallelogram on that side, it wouldn't be at an angle. It would be just flat on the table. So 15 centimeters. If we were to set it on the side that says 7 centimeters, notice how that's a diagonal line. It would be at an angle. Then our height makes a 90 degree angle to the base, so our height's going to be 5 centimeters. So we're going to do 15 times 5. Set up our lattice box here. 5 times 5, 25. 5 times 1 is 5. So we end up with 75. 75 centimeters squared. Don't forget the squared whenever you're working with two-dimensional shapes and area. So our next parallelogram, we're already given the base and the height. So the base is 8, the height is 7. So we're going to do 8 times 7 is 56. Again, we're working with centimeters squared. Here is your homework question number 3. Calculate the area of this parallelogram, and you'll notice there are decimals here, so you're going to have to create a lattice box and show your work in your math notebook, and you'll enter your answer in on the Google form. Base times height. Okay, for these examples, we're finding the area of parallelograms on a grid, and you'll see this every once in a while. It's important that you know um, what to do when you do see par um, parallelograms on a grid, when you're not given the base or the height. So we have to figure that out. So we're going to do parallelogram B here. I want you to look at parallelogram B. Look for the base. The base is pretty obvious. Be this right here. So we're going to label that with a B. Then we're going to count. We've got one, two, three, four and a half. It's going to be the base is going to equal four point five centimeters. And we know it's centimeters because up here it tells us, and it's measured in centimeters. We want to find the height. So the height goes up 90 degrees from the base. So our height, we're going to represent with H, equals 1, 2, 3 centimeters. So now we're going to need to multiply 4.5 times 3. I'm going to set up my lattice box. 4.5 times 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. 4 times 3 is 12. Then we're going to add them up, so we'll get 5, 3, and 1. Then my follow my decimal over, and I get 
13.5. So 4.5 times 3 is 13.5. So the area of parallelogram B would be 13.5 centimeters squared. Okay? Now we can do the same thing. With, let's do parallelogram C down here. This one's nice and easy. We've got a base of 2. Base equals 2 if we count 1, 2 squares, so 2 centimeters. And a height, 1, 2. H equals 2 centimeters. So 2 times 2 is 4. So the area of parallelogram C would be 4 centimeters squared. Okay, here's your last homework question. Find the area of parallelogram D. So parallelogram D down here, you're going to need to find the base and the height. And use your formula for a parallelogram to find the area of parallelogram D, and you'll enter that on your Google form. Thanks, and have a good night.